these sessions and um, hopefully that will help students who want to refer back to them. All right, so I think that we're going to have a really good semester. It worked well using Discord last semester when we started um, working from home, when everything became remote. So I was glad to continue using it this semester. Um, you don't have to have a webcam and you don't have to have a microphone, but it probably makes it easier to communicate if you have a webcam, uh, if you have a microphone. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mute a few people. And then if you wanna say something, you could just unmute yourself. But uh, it was kind of funny in my C++ class, a student was not muted and talking on the cell phone. So it's just easier if everybody is muted. And then when you know you wanna say something, you can just unmute yourself and then, you know, say what you need to say. Okay, so now I'm going to share my screen. So if we go ahead and click on this. Okay, do you guys see the stream? Yes, sir. Great. Go ahead and click on that. Okay, so somebody said, did you posted that here? What, what does that refer to? Also, could you change your name from test test to your actual name? So if, if you just want to click on the live stream, you just have to go over there to screen one. All right, so is anybody unclear? Now I'm seeing the live stream numbers going down, like people are leaving the live stream. So yeah, you you access the, the stream just from inside here in Discord. We're basically going to just do our classes from within Discord. Okay, great. So I, I think we have most people who are going to join the stream, joining the stream. So now let's go ahead and begin with our class. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the Moodle site. So I have owned freerschool.com for some time, uh, probably over a decade. So what I'd like everybody to do now is I would like everybody to go to the following link that I'm going to post inside of Discord. And probably the easiest way that you can sign into this site is to click on login. Let me go back here. Click on login. And then just log in using your account on Google. Once you log in using your account on Google, go ahead and use your MDC account. That way everyone's name will show up. All right. And then you should get an email to confirm you're logging in to the site and you're going to get that email um, 
may be in your spam folder. Okay, so you might have to go to your spam folder to see it. All right, so let me, I didn't get that link right. Log in using your account on Google. You just use like if we did it like the other way because I logged in without Google by accident. That's fine. That's okay. As long as you can just get into the site. Yeah, yeah, I'm good to go. Okay. Yeah, I, I did the same thing. I accidentally put uh, I did a uh, my own account. That's okay. Uh, it's, that's fine. It's it. Either way, it's fine. As long as your name is the same, then it's it's good. All right. All right. So as people are logging in. What we should be able to see is we should be able to see more and more students signing in and logged in. So I know there was some talk on the Discord about signing up for this early. So probably a lot of people have already signed up. And yeah, we've already got 21 people signed in. So that's really, really good. For the people who are just signing up for it right now, um, my only bit of advice is you might have to check your spam folder, okay? So you might need to check your spam folder. And the technical reason for that is because the um, site works with um, SMTP to go and it basically just automatically, it's automated to send an email out and a lot of companies, I guess, flag it as spam because you've never received an email from me before and it's just, it's, it's just seen as spam, right? So that's, that's no big deal. Um, you just go ahead and check on the spam folder and then should be able to get into it. Okay, so the important thing here is, let's refresh, see if some new people have signed up. Okay, good. Up to 26. You guys work fast. That's good. All right. So the important course that you guys need to enroll in, since we're in Java, you have to enroll in the Java course. So go ahead and click on Java MDC. And then once you're inside of Java MDC, you're going to click on Enroll Me in This Course. So it should be on the left, Enroll Me in This Course. And then we're going to start by looking at the class syllabus. So the first thing we're going to start with is the class syllabus. Okay, so I put both my Gmail and my dfreer at mdc.edu doesn't matter which you email me to. The quickest way to get a response is to do what you've been doing. Just make a comment on Discord. Now, there definitely is a lot of Discord messages. So I, I'm running four programming classes this summer at Miami-Dade. And today I must have fielded, it just felt like all day, my Discord is going, 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 going. Probably the most is in C++, just so many comments. And a student was saying that I should make lots of different channels because it's, you know, just so many messages. And, you know, I, I get that sentiment, but today is probably going to be the most messages because everybody is just getting everything set up and like it's just a lot to to go through now. Um, you can turn, you can change the notifications how you'd like for Discord. Basically, a lot of the things that are on Discord are not are not really for a direct grade. Like you're going to turn in everything for a grade on either Memer or Freer School. So, like if there's a discussion on Discord and um, somebody is asking me a question and you miss it, like that's not a huge deal, right? Like it's, it's beneficial probably for you to follow the Discord, 
but that's not that's not where the grades are going to come from. The grades are going to come from Memer, and the grades are going to come from Freer School. Freer School, but I think that Discord is a really great resource. So it's it's good that everybody is here in class, and it's it's definitely going to be beneficial. So there were a lot of messages today, but still, it's a good resource. Okay. So moving on, we will be using the Java programming language to solve problems related to mathematical inquiries, business simulations, games, and data processing. I use codingbat.com as a guide to write many of my test questions. It is recommended that students spend 30 minutes per day solving CodingBat questions. So you can see on the syllabus that I find CodingBat to be a great resource. It's really, really important. And it's a, it's a structured way to learn how to program. It's a site written by a Stanford professor. Just really, really excellent. So the repetition on the site will help you learn how to solve programming problems. Students who have experienced the greatest success in the class generally have put in the most effort solving problems on CodingBat. So we'll even start tonight looking at some CodingBat. Okay, so you will need um, to have a computer with internet access to complete assignments. Um, it's, it's possible for people to um, use some of the online resources with mobile devices, but it just becomes a lot harder. Like, it's just so much easier if you have a, a keyboard. It's just way way more convenient okay so this is an intermediate level programming course so we're starting off from the beginning assuming that you've taken C++ now every year I have students every semester I should say I have students who are put in this course and they haven't taken the prerequisite of COP 1334 and then when I talk with them they say that their advisor didn't tell them. So I, I'll assume that they're telling the truth and that there are some advisors who make that mistake. I'm hoping this time there's no one who has that mistake and that everybody did the prerequisite because if not, then you really need to withdraw from this course, get your full refund and take it in the future. Sign up for the C++ course. I actually have openings in my C++ course. So if you really want to learn computer programming, just go ahead and sign up for that. So somebody wants to ask a question? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I do, yeah. Sure. Um, can you say you recommend? I took C, you know, after that. Oh, you took, okay, okay, okay. You took C for engineers. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, it works. That works. Yeah, I never, I never got into, like, the, the, the production. Yeah, you know, so the so the official the official prerequisite is COP thirteen thirty four. But students who take C for engineers, they usually can do they can do all right in this course. So that's not that's that's not a big deal. But some students are put in this who have taken nothing. But I'm not saying like whatever you recommend because I do want to do what's best for like the career. Um, no, I think I think if you took C for engineers, um, you you'll be okay being in this course. Yeah. So yeah, that that's a that's a valid point. And somebody else wanted to say something. Yeah, uh, I want to ask. So you said C plus plus is the prerequisite. Yes, correct. Okay, that, that's all I want to ask. Okay, yeah. And someone yeah, sorry, a, sorry, a quick question. Would you recommend, um, let's say next semester, I have the time to take C plus also like help out everything? Um, well, if you if if you did take C plus plus after this course, it's gonna be way easier. So, I yeah yeah I kind of think it. No what, why, I guess. You're a you're a computer engineering major or computer science major? Uh, yeah. Java and, uh, 
Yeah. Um, you know what might be good for you is if you called the, if you called an advisor at, at FIU and asked them what they recommend. Because okay. I know they accept this Java course at um, FIU, but they won't accept the advanced Java course at FIU. They just consider it an elective. So, okay. um, yeah, call them and ask them about taking C++. But, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. All right, cool. So, um, very good questions. And I, I always like when students ask things because like if it's just me talking then like this could be a video so that was that was excellent okay good so now we look at the course competencies so we're going to study and you will demonstrate an understanding of the java system architecture and its major components the student will demonstrate an understanding of the prof of the professional software development process Students will demonstrate an understanding of fundamental programming constructs and concepts. The student will demonstrate an understanding of the following advanced programming techniques, meaning classes and objects, inheritance, I'm just going to kind of not read it word for word, but cover the main points, object-oriented design concepts, Java input and output. Um, let's see, let me go ahead and... Okay, um, let's see. Then we have exception programming. We are gonna do GUI programming and event-driven programs. And then you'll demonstrate an understanding of professional development. So all these put together make up the Java course over the summer. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and skip the Go ahead and skip the boilerplate. It's not super important. And now we get to our Memer registration. Now, Memer is the only thing that's required for the course. So you're actually going to save a lot of money. Um, many professors in this course use a really expensive book. It's in the bookstore. If you already bought it and you want to return it, that's fine. If you want to keep it, that's fine too. Um, I keep it on the syllabus because there are, see, I'm a full-time instructor at Miami-Dade, and I don't really need to use a lot of the um, things that come with the textbook. Like, the textbook has all kinds of pre-made exercises, and the textbook has all kinds of PowerPoints, and this, that. Well, I've been teaching Java for um, 12 years, so I don't need to have all that stuff, so I can save you a lot of money by just having you use the free online textbook. And it's a really, really good online textbook. So you don't pay anything for the online textbook. It's great, really, really excellent. Now, Memer, you go ahead. Oh, I'm just saying sorry, free is always better. Yeah, yeah, free is always better. Now, um, in, in some cases, students will like, like, let's say I'm teaching C++ and I still have the, the book that costs money. Um, I, I even recommend that they get the slightly older version because the type of language features that we're using, they really don't change that much. So you don't need to stay, like in that course. In this course, um, I guess Java has, Java's changed quite a bit in terms of lambdas and things like that so you can't you can't go back too far with the java textbook but this textbook is pretty well updated and it's it's good it's a good free online textbook all right so the recommended book from the bookstore is the gaddis textbook and it's called starting out with java so if you have um, a scholarship or a grant and you get the book free in the bookstore you can go ahead and pick that up and it's, it's not bad, it's nice to have a paper textbook, but it's, it's not really, the textbook isn't going to be the main component of this course. So it's gonna be more problem solving rather than just reading the textbook, reading the textbook. Even though textbooks can be useful, actually doing problem solving to me is much more useful for this course. All right, so I'm usually pretty quick about responding to emails and I would say with um, Discord, it's usually not going to be a super long delay at all. 
I think there is one thing I want to change about Discord. I had a policy last time, um, last semester, of trying to respond to students no matter when they wrote. So they would see I would be awake at 3 in the morning, and we would end up writing about Java. And in some ways, it's good. But in other ways, it's like, no, let's try to keep it more during, like, just regular day hours. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess if, if I am on there and somebody sees, like, I mean, I could always try to wait till the next morning. I might have the compulsion to try to write back then. It probably doesn't matter too much. But I think the point I'm getting at is when you're doing programming, if you have somebody who rushes too quickly to answer all your questions, in the end, it doesn't even help the student because you do need to have a bit of time where you're trying to answer something. And I think that's a really, really key component. Like, of course, I'm here to help guide you, but um, you do need to have a bit of that um, pressure on yourself because that's going to help you when you go on to more advanced courses. It's going to help you when you go to job interviews. And the reality is just let's say that that somebody gets an A in this course, but they don't actually learn the subject. Well, there's not a company on earth who's just going to say, oh, you got an A in, in intro to Java. So here's your job. You're good. We're not going to ask you any questions. No, they're they're going to give you really challenging interview questions and that's what you're really training for in this course to enable you to succeed on those interview questions and or even if you don't want to get a job in this field just to learn the material so you're you're competent with it okay so let's continue on you're responsible for completing the tutorials there we go all right so how do you get your grade in here now let's talk about grades so you're going to have major assignments. So the major assignments are going to be assignments not on Memer, but assignments submitted to freerschool.com. Um, what sort of major assignments are there? Well, one major assignment is going to involve making a GUI for a small business. Another major assignment will involve connecting Java front end with a remote AWS database and then the third major assignment we're probably only going to do three the third major assignment is my favorite one that's where you pick the final project all right so your final project is going to be of your own creation your own desire now there's going to be a wide range of skills in this course some people the final projects are just going to be amazing like this has happened every time I've taught this course for years and years and years, where the final projects, if, if people didn't know any better, they'd think like they paid a professional developer. But I saw the students build it, I got to know them, and they just really put a lot of effort into it, and, and they, they did amazing work, right? So that's really the goal of this course, to get you to have a final project that you're really, really proud of. Now, what if you're not at that like super elite level by the end of the course for the final project? That's okay too. Some people's final projects are things like keeping track of inventory for um, a lemonade stand, but they have a nice interface. So it's kind of a build, it's kind of building on the small business project and in the end, it shows that they can keep track of some important stuff with a computer and they'll make a good grade and the students who did some amazing, amazing final project, they'll make a good grade too. So what's a way that you can do really poorly on the final project? Well, if you just go to GitHub and copy somebody else's project, that's a way to get an F on the final project. Um, if you don't do a final project, that's a way to get an F on the final project. So you know, there, there is some subjectivity in terms of, well, this student got an 85, this student got a 95 or 100. Usually the grades in the final project tend to be pretty good because you're going to tell me what you want to do. You say you're going to do it, you show me you're doing it, and then you do it. And you're going to explain on this Discord channel one day 
Uh, I'm going to not talk. You're going to share your screen and you're going to talk about your final project. Now, some people don't have microphones. So what I let students do is I let them make a PowerPoint presentation. And it kind of worked out last time because about 20 students did their their final project presentation by just talking on Discord. And then about, I don't know, maybe 15 just sent me their presentations and it, it all worked out. So it, it was good with the timing. So I'm gonna leave a few classes for people to just talk about their final project, but we have a long, long time. I mean, we're talking about late August, right? <laughs> You'll be showing this in the week of August 21st. So we have we have a long time before we get to the final project. Okay, minor assignments. So minor assignments are almost always submitted on Memer. You're given certain tests that you have to complete and then Memer will tell you, you missed this, you submit until you finally get everything perfect. All right, so the exams are also on Memer and you can resubmit those until you get it to how you want. And this is an interesting thing that I started about a year ago. It's a Code Wars learning log. So I, I really like the site Code Wars along with Coding Bat, where I have students go on the site, answer problems, and then once a week write up two problems that they solved and they they will, here I'm trying to get to the code words log, and they will just reflect on what they've learned, right? So in the reflection answer, they say, you'll answer, what new programming concept did you learn? What was the most challenging aspect of the problem? Provide a link to the problem you completed during the week, which you are journaling. And you're allowed to complete as many code wars problems as you like. Um, I think you'll find the site can be competitive, it can be fun. I'm solving problems on it all the time just because I like to try to keep my skills up. And um, it's really, really an excellent site. All right, so in the end, you'll submit these on freerschool.com. Okay, so I've got a link to a sample. Now, this is important about grading. Let's, let's look at the grading for a second. <clears throat> a lot of people in here will get an A. People may get a B, people may get a C, people may get a D. If you get less than 60, then that's an F. Now the issue about increasing your letter grade is once you start making like excuses, like let's say somebody writes me an email and says, well, I had a 50, can you give me this? I had a 40, can you give me this? Pretty soon it gets really, really extreme. So just stay on top of all your work Many people can do fine in this course. It, it is challenging, it's a lot of work, but you know you can definitely do it. Now, I, I do wanna say one thing about the major projects before I move on. Um, last class, I, I was assigning the major assignment where students had to connect from their computer to an AWS remote database. And I gave them a good percentage of the code. And when, when some students didn't do it, let's just look at the percentages here, just to talk about the grades, okay? When a few students didn't do it, so we had three major assignments, and the major assignments are worth a quarter of your grade. So if you totally skip one major assignment, that's a pretty considerable hit to your final grade. And after some students didn't do their database project, it was during the beginning of the pandemic, I said, listen, I'll extend it for you, just do the assignment and then your grade can go up. And instead of just doing it, some of them said, no, it's not fair, it's too much work, I can't do it, I can't do it. And that's really not the right attitude to have because it's a very important concept and I think with some of the complaints I was getting, they, a few of them almost invested more time into complaining about an assignment with databases rather than just doing it. 
So it was really kind of an odd um, set of circumstances. But I'm, I'm just trying to make the point that these assignments are very important for your understanding of Java. There's, there's going to be no busy work during the course where you're just you know, randomly doing things that have no connection to your, your future career. Uh, I mean, AWS itself is a really, really hot field, Amazon Web Services. So to be able to put that on your resume that you've done projects with it is just definitely a, a net positive. So try to take that attitude about these assignments They've been picked to try to help improve your competitive ability, your your you know your competitive ability in the in the working world. I always have students who are pretty eager to get out and start making money. Some of you are trying to finish your four year degree, which I totally respect that too. But in the end, this is a competitive field, and we really have to keep our skills up to par. Okay, so let's move on now to. The guidelines, so I will put on Memer deadlines where you can submit past the deadline, but you'll lose points. That's to try to focus your attention. The code must be your own. We can't have one person doing the assignment, mailing it to everybody else. The Memer will check that, so your variable names have to be different. The structure has to be different. And again, that's to, to help you, okay? So, useful websites. We have CodingBat, some tutorials from Oracle, Hacker News, which is a really great website for learning about what's going on in the world of technology. There's an interesting, slightly older book called Big Java. You may be interested in purchasing. Some of the slides that I might use during the course come from this book, but um, it's, it's pretty cheap now that it's older. Okay, mostly everybody is going to finish this course but some of you may have a situation where you need an incomplete grade i've only given out a few in my career at miami dade but what an incomplete means is you're passing the course something toward the end of the semester happens where you just can't continue i mean let's just take coronavirus for instance if you get coronavirus you're in the hospital you know you can't most of you are young and probably won't put you in the hospital, but it could happen, right? Like that's not totally unheard of. If that happens, you don't just get an F for the last assignment, you get an incomplete, and then you just make up the assignment when you recover. But um, that's not a super common thing. Usually everybody who signs up for the course gets through the course, but it is a possibility that's worth talking about. Okay, so I'm going to hold these live sessions from 5.20 until 7.30. Two hours and 10 minutes is an awfully long time to be in an online course. So what I did in my C++ course is I ended things a bit early and I interacted one-on-one -on -one with students. Most of them, I would say a good number stuck, stuck around in Discord and communicated with me one-on-one, -on -one, which I thought was pretty valuable. So I don't anticipate tonight going up till 7.30. There might be some nights when we do. Um, it, you know, here's another interesting thing. When, when we were doing the final projects in the last class, I, I had a student who the second we would go over the time, the student would start messaging me, we're over time, we're over time. We're, and I would just respond back to him, if you have something to do, you can leave like this student is in the middle of their presentation i'm not going to cut them off just because you want to log off right like like i i mean maybe the student was being a little long-winded talking about their code i don't know but i certainly didn't want to to say okay everything's done it's not like there were other students waiting to get into the room um, that happens in an in-person class. Like in person, I do have to cut people off and say, no, we have to leave. A new class is coming in. We can't stay here. In here, we can have a little bit more flexibility. Do we end a little bit early? Do we stay a little late? But if you have something you have to do, you don't need to be messaging me at 7.30, stop everything, right? You can just, just <laughs> log off. So I, I think that's an important concept that virtual is different from in-person in terms of like how strict we have to be with this now with that said i do want to follow this time period 
I didn't want to make this course just a set of videos that you play and a set of assignments you do. I definitely wanted to have interaction, like you're asking me things and I'm responding. So there we go. Okay, so now let's look at June 1st. Today we're going to do quite a bit of stuff. We're going to start talking about objects and thinking about variables. We'll talk about the different tools that we have. We'll review C++ programming a bit when we um, sign up for Code Wars. We'll think about some Java technology like Replit. You'll start reading The Way of the Program, which is the textbook for the course, and read Conditionals and Logic. And lastly, I'd like you to start working on coding bed. So there's really a, a lot to cover. Um, why don't we go ahead and jump in. We'll jump in in the middle. So let's go ahead and click on REPL.IT. You can go ahead and click on it on your own computer. So you'll have a REPL open, and I'll have a REPL open. All right, so I can go ahead and click on New REPL. And I'll make a C++. And I'll just call it Review C++. It looks like they don't like the plus symbols in the URL up here. Okay, so here we see include IO stream int main std c out hello world. All right, so if we click here and run this. We go ahead and see hello world no big surprise there now if we wanted to make some variables you probably learned in your C or C++ class that you start with the data type so we say int I equals 10 and if we want to double it we can say I times equals 2 Oops, got the wrong symbol in there And then we can go ahead and just print out what's the value of i. And it looks like I typed the wrong thing. My computer's awfully slow. I have to get to the bottom of this. Okay. I think it's because I'm recording and OBS is really slow. So we've got i equals 10. And, geez, I just changed it to 2. I meant to have multiplied by 2. This is really, really getting annoying with OBS running. I'm going to have to get to the bottom of that. Okay, now it's working. So we see I equals 10. I multiplied itself times 2 will give us 20. And then we print out I is 20, okay, along with the new line. Now what I want to do is I want to compare that to Java. So I can go ahead and say a new REPL. And I'll just click on a Java REPL. And I'll just call this intro to Java. And we'll keep the hello world in, but we're going to make an int i. So I'm going to type int i equals 10. And then what was the next thing I did with i after I made it equal to 10? Doubled it. Exactly, I doubled it. So I'm going to say i equals i times 2. 
And now this is something that's different. I could have done I times equals two, but I just sort of wrote it out to be really explicit with what I'm doing. I'm taking I, multiplying it by 10 and storing the result. I mean, multiplying it by two and storing the result in I. And now I'm going to print out the result. So I'm gonna say system dot out dot print line I. And now I'm gonna run it. And we see, okay, hello world and I is 20. Now there's similarities with the C++ code and differences. One of the similarities is the way we define I. We say int I equals 10. I equals I times two. This is the same. What's different? Well, the main method looks different. You see, this is a lot more wordy in Java. We write out public static void main inside the parentheses string array args um, everything in java has to be inside of a class so that's why we start with object oriented programming in this class but there's similarities and there's differences so this is just our first look into java code now making an account on REPL is a really good idea um, I think it's probably easiest if you sign in with your Google account, but if you want to make a separate account, that's fine too. But REPL is a really, really cool site. People are doing some amazing work with it. It's, it's definitely not a toy. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on this link here, read the way of the program. Professor? Yes. When I try to run the same program, I, um, it says that I actually had an error and a compiler exit status. Cop Copy your code into Discord and I'll look at it. All right, let's see. So we've got int. I didn't change much on it. Added was like oh, I, I, I see the problem. Okay, I'm actually glad you posted that. You see where you've got system.out.println? You've got to have a capital S. Yeah, exactly. It, it's case sensitive. Okay, thanks for running. Yeah, no problem. Oh, can you show your code again? I just don't want to double check it. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it worked for me now. Great. So here's one cool thing about REPL, how easy it is to share code. If I wanted, I could click here on share, copy this link, Paste it here. Yeah, exactly. You can share it with people. So you should be able to look at that. Now, I can also add collaborators. So let's see. Let's see. Search for username or invite by email. Oh, that's cool. So you can really post it and make it look cool. You can write the title, describe it. Nice. All right. So REPL, really cool site. I definitely recommend it. And we're going to use it a lot during the course. So one thing is kind of interesting. Um, I don't hear the notifications when people are... Maybe I have to turn that on on Discord, but um, it might be because sorry, 
but I have the channel open. So when you have it open, it doesn't doesn't it doesn't do the little notification. Oh, okay, okay. So that's yeah, cool. So if you're not in that channel, then it will do like the little ding or whatever. I see. Yeah. Okay. Well, what what actually kind of works out nicely is each time today that I've gone back to the chat, people have answered each other's questions, which is totally why I was so excited about using Discord because it's not like everybody is waiting for me. You guys are, you know, taking ownership, so it's already really, really good. All right. Yeah, so plus Discord is a very social thing. You can message anyone. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's a great thing. Like if you guys start messaging each other, I I think that's that's awesome. Like college shouldn't be the solitary thing where everybody is totally in their own world. Like everybody should be you know, making good connections and really, really networking. Network. Exactly. That's the term. Yeah, for sure. So somebody says, would code blocks be okay to use instead of Replit? Well, yeah, that's fine. Um, for a long time, we used code blocks. I, I used code blocks. Some professors might still prefer it. Um, for your final project, some of you might be well, okay, wait a minute. I just got confused for a second. I, I've never used code blocks with Java. Um, I've, I mean, you probably could use it because it's a text editor, it's an IDE. Um, previously, I always started with NetBeans. Um, there is going to come a time in this course when we are going to use NetBeans just because NetBeans makes it so easy to make a GUI. Now, IntelliJ is also a good IDE. IntelliJ is probably the best Java IDE there is. And you're students, so it's free. So some people might prefer to use IntelliJ. Um, but oh yes, yeah, somebody says, what about NetBeans? All those are good. And if you're following along and you'd prefer to use one of those, that's fine. Because the truth is, when when you submit your things to NetBeans, I mean to Memer, it doesn't matter where you generated the code. It just matters, you know, that it works. And some students have more trouble getting things installed than others. Um, so that's why I start with REPL because it's just it's just so easy. So that's cool. Some people have been using REPL for C plus plus, and just out of curiosity, which instructor used REPL for C++? Was it um, Bibby? Uh, for me, I had a uh, professor was Yu Long. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I've, I've... Somebody said something, but they kind of got cut off. Yeah. Was that David Delgado? Yes, David Delgado, cool guy. All right, good. So let's go ahead and continue on. And now let's go back to our Think Java chapter. <clears throat> okay, so how to think like a computer scientist. Click here on the way of the program. You can either read it on the website or download the PDF. Probably the PDF version is easier to read. It's better formatted. And this book is to help you think like a computer scientist. So some of you don't have aspirations to be a computer scientist. But you will be solving problems in your future career, whether you're an engineer or you're a data analyst or, I don't know, let's say you, you decide to totally switch gears and become a psychologist. Well, you'll still be solving problems and I think that this book will still be helpful. This mindset, this way of thinking, it's a really, really good book. So I recommend reading through the book. I'm just gonna have the links on the site. I'm never gonna sit here and read it to you, but I have been making a set of YouTube videos where I do kind of go over the book in a little more detail. So I think I'll probably post those videos onto Freer School and just remind you of them. But um, I'd prefer to use the class time for more interactive programming rather than just like going over the book because everybody can read through the book. And there we go. Okay, so that's the first link, the way of the program. If we go back to the syllabus, 
We can see there's another one about conditionals and logic. Let's click on that really quickly. So conditionals and logic, this is going to get into more Java syntax, not just a high level stuff talking about how to do relational operators since everybody has already taken an intro programming course you've already learned about equality learned about not equals greater than less than greater than or equal to now here's the difference between Java and C++ in Java we write out boolean like this in C++ you would just use B O O L you just write out bool Okay, so this is a pretty useful chapter, so I'd recommend that you go over this chapter here. Okay, so next thing, well actually before we do coding bat, I think I want you to send me the email. So let's all go back to freerschool.com. So there's one thing I wanted to add on this. Professor? Yes. Plus, plus, I remember uh, my professor teaching me that if you put namespace SCD, you don't have to write out uh, yeah. the uh, SCD double colon C out. Uh, so I never actually did that. Is right. there something similar for, uh, for Java so you don't have to write system out? Um, no. Some, well, some IDEs have shortcuts, but um, no, Java's a, a more wordy language, so it's that's that's just one of the differences. Like it's pretty much expected that if you're gonna print something out, you're gonna write out system dot out dot print line. So if you're gonna write to the console, that's that's how you do it. With NetBeans, you would just type S O U T and then tab, and it would auto complete. Maybe um, REPL has added some shortcuts. I don't think they had it last semester. But um, I, I'm just used to typing it out, and you'll probably get used to typing it out too. But um, no, it, it, is, it is a more wordy language. Like you can see just the difference between the main method in, or the main function in C++ and the main method in Java. It's just, it's way more. So that's just the difference. That's how I'd answer that question. Sure. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the email component of the class. And there's actually some participation I want from you guys. You're gonna to go to a site called typingtest.com and you're gonna take a one minute test. This isn't gonna take a very long time. I just wanna see how quickly you can type. Now, why do I do this? Because occasionally I have students who are just really, really fast typists and it's just something that intrigues me. I don't know why. <laughs> it doesn't mean you're going to be a, a better programmer. But I guess I would say two of the best programmers I've ever had at Miami-Dade both were insanely fast typists. So I've had some really good programmers who weren't insanely fast typists, but two of the best could do over 100 words per minute, which is really, really not super wow. common. Yeah, <laughs> they were really fast. They, and when we were in the room, they would really be attacking the keyboard. Like you'd really, you'd know when they were typing. So I want everybody to go ahead and do that now. 
go ahead and do this test and um, send me the emails and that's it. Then we'll then we'll meet back in let's say five minutes. It takes five minutes to write this email. So we'll talk at six twenty. Uh, uh, Perez, I had a question. Sure, go ahead. Uh, where do we find the email that we have to do? So time off? right. So if you go to Freer School um, and you press F five on the keyboard, it should refresh the the page, and then you should see it. You see, send me an email. Oh, okay. yeah. Cool. Yes, yeah, cool. he sent me. Okay. No problem. And you send an email directly from the website, or this is from my home? Just from your your regular website, probably easiest. Professor, I had a question. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, how do I how do I send you the Could you how, how do I send you the test? Or do I send you that? So you just just give me the ah. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Um, yeah, you just basically just type into the email the, the speed. So you, you go to freerschool.com. Yeah, you don't need to like make a screenshot. Like you can just, you can just put the number. Okay. Uh... So there's there's I'm other looking for it on uh, for your right. You might need to refresh the page. So just refresh the browser. Um. Okay, I refreshed it. Okay. Do you see? I'm supposed to look for an assignment that. Uh, the... It send me an email. Oh. Yes. Okay. 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 There it is. Okay. Thank you. No problem. 